So Liz, we've 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 evaluated a lot of these different these different video tools. What why is Nvidia risen to the top of the heap for us? I think because of the simplicity of how you know we it's being used. It's also got like loads of stock in the libraries. You know the video clips, the images, and it's also just it has some of the features that you expect in like. Um, you know, something like Premiere Pro or After Effects, it's all built in there for like a simple web tool. I'm quite impressed that for it can do some of the things. For th creating things like the transitions and, and the flow. So basically, yeah. it's, so basically, I, I don't need you anymore. I can just do this all myself. <laughs> well. Okay, take me. Show would... <laughs> me. Let me take me into the product itself because I must have looked at dozens of these different tools, and I like their interface. But I want to see how. But I don't do the work anymore. You do it. So show me how we do. How you create content. All right. So this is the screen you see as soon as you log in. Okay. And you have like three options. And the first option is you can convert, convert an article to a video, and you can also use their pre-made templates. They have. So many. Okay, so and just a minute. So stop a second. Yeah. By converting an article to video, you're taking a blog post and converting it? Yes, yep. Okay. Or you so, could take a script or you could take an article from somewhere else. It doesn't have to be your blog post. So the key there, the key thing to understand is it, the reason that they start us here is they want people to have success really quickly. I mean, that's one of the things. I had a quick chat with their founder and that's one of their goals and objectives is, is they realize that they've got a very limited amount of time to get people uh, embracing the product. And so you have to have success really early on. So uh, when, we, when we started with this, uh, we actually evaluated uh, a whole bunch of video creators that you see out today. And uh, of course, one side of the spectrum is uh, uh, the complex softwares like Adobe After Effects or Apple FCP. Yeah. And then you would see like a whole bunch of uh, simple web-based uh, uh, video creators which would let you make those slideshow kind of text overlay videos. Mm -hmm. uh, none of these were really solving the right problem or helping you make a good professional video. So uh, that was uh, there always and that is exactly what NVIDIA solves. Uh, we, we've got the right balance between the uh, flexibility and the ease of use. So you don't really need the uh, the the uh, complex learning curve of an Adobe After Effects, but you can really get good professional quality output videos. It's kind of built to suit anybody at any level, which is why like beginners are really great, you know, business owners, entrepreneurs, um, even agencies. I know a lot of agencies using the tool to create uh, videos for their clients. Mm -hmm. And as you can see here at the bottom here, it says I am a pro video editor. So you could start from scratch. You could start from a blank canvas. So okay. it's not necessarily just a beginner's tool. If you were an advanced video editor like myself, you could just start from scratch okay. uh, and still feel comfortable using it just like you would Premiere Pro. Probably save you a lot more time because they've got a lot of uh, materials there that you don't have to create from scratch. So let's let's take me into the templates, through the templates, because I think that's where most people are going to enter. And yeah. I think once you understand the f workflow, then you can probably be creating the scripts or go in through the through the uh, the expert level. But most of our people are, that are on the live stream with us now, they're going to want to come in through this. So this gives us an idea of the kind of social media assets that we can create, use as a background for a video uh, to share. So I see lots there that are going to be suitable for for Instagram and for Twitter. Um, probably not so much YouTube, but certainly the, 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 fee, the feed-based sharing platforms, right? Yeah, I think like for YouTube, you can as well because they have a category. If you look on the left here, which oh, okay. I really love, they have curated templates. Um, oh. And you have things like, you know, if you just want to do a logo intro or you want to just do like a, oh. a longer intro, this is great for YouTube. Actually, I think this is a very powerful tool for YouTubers as well. That opened my eyes to something. Okay, so let's, let's take a yeah. look at creating a social post that we'd use in Instagram or Facebook. And one of the powerful features, one thing that we should point out is, 
when you create an asset in this, even though you're creating it in a format for Instagram, they've got an export function that will automatically convert it into a Facebook friendly format or, uh, or a square format or whatever other formats you want, correct? Yes. So in that case, say if you're creating one video and you start first for say YouTube, and what you do at the end of the project is you duplicate that project and then just change the the dimensions and then export that. And it, and so, it, and it automatically configures everything to fit. Yes, yeah. yes. But obviously, you with any tool, I'd say you always preview it first, make sure everything's okay. You could rejig things, but pretty much it's like Canva, if you yeah. know like Canva, right? It's they got a just, very Canva feel, yeah. It's very much a Canva feel, but like okay, for video... Click yeah. on something, Liz. Click on something. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, there you go. Here's like the minute you click it, it'll show you a preview okay. of the video. And then you could choose what size you want. So this is the very cool thing, isn't it? Even before you create it, you could see what it's going to look like. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So let's say we start with this one. We'll just go in. So let me ask you quickly about the licensing. There was a video running in the background. That's royalty free. That's included with your subscription. Yes, that's all included with the subscription. And uh, you could even change it up. Say if you wanted a, a different uh, clip, you just go uh, search here. And what I love about this is literally just drag and drop and then and then they ask you what you want to do with it. So you want to replace, add behind, add its layer. In this case, I'll just replace it. But in many cases, like for, uh, this is when I say is that it has the advanced tools where you can add things in layers, you know, like Photoshop and yeah. Premiere Pro. And that's a really advanced thing to have. And I saw um, an editing and, timeline in the bottom there. So it is very much a classic video. Now, one of the things that, uh, just before you, so obviously all of these different elements, we can go in and we can edit, we can modify the content. People should recognize that. And, uh, you know, that's what we should expect. But it seems pretty snappy, Liz. What do you mean by snappy? I <laughs> mean, it's typically speaking, when you use a lot of these web tools, they're really laggy. They, You know, you drag something oh, yes. and it takes a long time for it to resolve. And it can be frustrating being in the creative process when the tool works slower than your brain. Absolutely. And that was like the case for a lot of video editing tools out there, like the web-based ones, mm -hmm. um, for a very long time. I mean, these... This isn't a new thing. It's been around for, for five years or so now. There's a lot of web tools. But the the constraint was always that because it's on the web, it's always very slow, it's laggy, you know, and then the export takes ages. But within video, what I've noticed is, like you said, it's very snappy. And even when you're, ex you're exporting, it's really quick. Okay. Um, and I've compared with a few uh, services. I have to say that, you know, um, I've been with them for a few months now. It only gets better and better. So that means they must be listening to feedback um, of people and then, you know, improving the service every time. Uh, like I mentioned earlier that we want to democratize video production. Uh, that means we want uh, anyone and everyone to create a video. So the core goal has always been uh, how we can make it very simple for them. So once you get in, you will always find a whole bunch of templates, uh, which would be a good uh, a starting point or an inspiration. Uh, so as a layman, you need not have the creative background or something that you need to build from scratch. You always have an inspiration that you can start from. And then, of course, you can build over it. Quickly show me how we change the text and how you transition from one piece of text to another. We won't spend too, too much time in the editing, but I kind of want to get a feel for how it how it packages together yeah so for whenever you want to change anything you just point at it and then you you change the text here or you can even change the text here okay. so let's say that that and was, then you can change yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, that front is gone, isn't it? And then you could change, you go back to the right hand side, is, is basically where you do most of the edits. Mm -hmm. You could change the fonts, you could change the color, the size, um, you could even change the animation as it comes in. Okay. Uh, you could change per letter, or you could, cha you could change the animation per the whole text box. So, and you know what? I just want to point out what something that's very cool. You could also change up the colors to match your brand. So on the top right here, this is where you put in your custom brand colors. Every element on it's editable. What's the process if you're uploading your own photo or video for the background so you're not using their templates, but you're incorporating your own content? 
good question. So if you want to upload, you just go to the left hand side here. Mm -hmm. And then as you can see, I've uploaded a few of your clips okay. <laughs> and the logo. You just click there and then you have a file limit up to 800 megabytes. And then you just click there and oh, upload nice. as per normal. Yeah. So you could quickly add our logo to that to that one that you're creating right oh, now yeah. just by dragging just it drag out there. Just drag and drop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's sweet. Okay. Yeah. Very so, elegant. Okay. And also, just to uh, mention, this is very, like, if you upgrade to the business uh, sort of package, you get team uploads. So, say if you have several people using the account, you could see what other people are uploading and then use that as, like, you know, your company resource. And you don't have to keep emailing people or dropboxing people, asking them to send uh, the, your assets your media assets. Okay, so we've been talking about the different layers that we have and the access we have to changing fonts, colors, etc. Now take me from from uh, almost from scene to scene or slide to slide. If we have another piece of text that that text converts into as we're telling the story, what does it look like as we transition to the next scene? So usually what you do is put every scene you could preview it and you can see roughly what is coming up in that particular scene. Yeah. So once you're happy with it, usually you want to uh, determine what the transition is to the next slide. And that's where this little button here comes in, in between scenes. Okay. And you just click that and uh. you have so many choices for transitions. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I use Premiere Pro, right, uh, Steve, for yep. most of my our stuff. And um, I usually have to bring in that transition effect one by one do you know what i mean like i have yeah. to either buy it off uh, envato something that's not really easily built in so like this you just click it and that it's there and these are powerful transitions they're pretty good and usually you have only have four or five on a video editor like a web yeah. app but this yeah. one just look there's so many and, and i looks, think they're adding all the time and it looks like it's very beginner friendly like you you're not making a lot of decisions about the transition overlaps and how long a transition lasts you can probably get in to do that but the presets are probably just really good basic editing yeah absolutely um but talking about like uh being basic and advanced right that i want to show you one advanced feature that i really want to sh uh highlight here which is you know, when you think about templates, you think you're restricted. Mm -hmm. But here, if you look on the right hand side, you can actually control how quick this video runs. Uh, okay. And that's actually like quite advanced for a web app tool that uses templates. And I think that's really great. And you could uh, crop things, you could, you know, you could do all sorts of things just within this one scene here. The other al element to video is we've got, we've dealt with text, getting graphics in, stock video background, importing your own video background. But the big challenge for many creators is music. And music's the one that ends up biting you in the ass most Absolutely. often too because you end up getting flagged for, um, for, for not having a license for the music. So how do they deal with music? Yeah, so they actually have a library of music as well. So if you look on the left-hand side here, you can see you could choose... Um, there's there's different categories mm -hmm. so you just choose based on what the mood of the video is and you could preview it you know how sometimes some videos you want to talk over it so you mm -hmm. want the the background music not to be too loud okay, so, so you can hear so you yeah. could control that again it looks like it's got a lot of the power that we have in our typical video editor but the the um the, the the number of controls and the number of decisions we make is dramatically reduced you don't have to go in and set levels like in a in, a, in an equalizer you've just got a couple of sliders to say the background music this loud the foreground music this loud make it work exactly exactly and it's just and they, i think the collection of this is also growing all the time does this, now you're a video professional, does this scare you? <laughs> is that, well, that going to put you out of business? Not really. I mean, a, a little bit, but um, I think like I could use it to my advantage as well because sometimes like, you know, you know uh, as well as I do that we pump out content like there's no tomorrow mm -hmm. and we need to get things done quick and sometimes we just need to like have a quick turnaround and tools like this can really help me. Like I, if you say you want something done, you know, within an hour, I can do it. Like, you know, I, 
Don't it, tell me that. This was... is this is bad. I've got this on video now. <laughs> I know I shouldn't have said that, but like it's true. It's true. Even for professionals, to do a high level professional video takes time. If you're doing it like you know with tools like After Effects or Prima Pro, it takes time. So having a tool like this is all done for it's you, so you don't have to think about it. And that, to me, is when we kind of boil down why we've decided to talk about this product is is the bottom line. I think that content is still king. Yeah. But in in a really noisy social media space uh, universe, your content has to look good. It doesn't have to look. It doesn't have to be broadcast caliber in order to work well, but it has to be good. And this yeah. makes it good. You can't do in this what you do in After Effects. I mean, at the end of the day, you're not going to be able, and you don't want to, because you don't want to have to make that many decisions. You don't want to spend that much time crafting each and every frame, but you want to be able to tell a story. And this tool looks to me like it takes, it allows you to take the story that you want to tell, convert it into video, and then export it in the, in, with, with, the, with the least amount of time and the least amount of effort, but the most amount of polish at the end. Yeah, you just said it just perfectly because uh, you and I both know that nowadays people tend to, uh, I mean, fear the tool, right? And yeah. if that fear is taken away and they could just focus on the message and the content, then their marketing would be so much better. It doesn't matter what format is video or blogging or audio, right? But if you, they could just think, uh, uh, have more time to think about the message that they're putting out there rather than fiddling with tools, yeah. then they'd have a better marketing um, for their business. You know, this is a very busy space. And one of the things that kind of excites me or that impressed me is in the latest reviews that we've been seeing in this space, uh, NVIDIA has been really performing really well. I mean, I'm not that surprised, but I, I'm really impressed. They they recently got a high scores in the G2 Crowd Report, which is mm -hmm. like, you know, one of those consumer reports. And they scored higher than Adobe, Filmora, and Animoto in, yeah. in a lot of categories. And I thought, whoa. And they've, you know, mind you, they've only been around for about three years. You know, what no. I see here is I see that they've taken some of the best things from it, especially from a tool like Canva. As we said right at the beginning, we've seen the Canva, we see a very Canva-like approach. And so I think that they've benefited from being a little bit of a latecomer to the marketplace, that they've seen the uh, the pain points that the other video creation tools have as far as user interface goes and where, where people fall off or have challenges. And they've managed to design it from the beginning uh, with a with a friendlier user interface. Yeah, absolutely. And also, you know, uh, one thing that I really love about this, like the other day I was having um, some issues. Well, not a big issue. I just wanted to get their, um, get to their uh, tutorials. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I just click this button over here for their support. And it was a Sunday as well, I remember. And I literally like within seconds, I got somebody oh. talking back to me. And it's not like an Autobot, it's an actual person. That is so huge because when you're in the creative moment and you want to do something, you want the answer now when you're doing these things. Creating video is not like writing. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a creative process that you want instant results. And when you're in the moment and you're inspired, you want to be able to do what you're doing. Exactly right, yeah. and that is when your mind is kind of like in a bit of a fried zone. And yeah, you can't kind of, and you just need that like a little bit. Yeah. Of How do I do this? Yeah. So let's go to the end. Let's go to the end yeah. game. We finished a video. Yeah. Show me the export functions because it's all about where and how we use it. So show me that. All right. So as soon as you say for you're happy with everything, all you need to do is click this button up up here, preview and export. Mm-hmm. So they let you uh, preview it before you decide to export. Let's say we're happy with it. Sure. I'm going to click export video. And then it comes here and you wait for it to be processed. In the mm -hmm. meantime, you could maybe edit the uh, name of the project or, you know, yep. do whatever it is that you want. But it won't be long. But uh, after that, uh, say, for instance, this is another video created in a day. Once it's done, you just click download. Okay. Or you could share directly to um, your social media you platform. Share it directly. Now you said now if this we created we created in vertical format. Now if we wanted to re-output this particular video to horizontal format for say for to post into Twitter, what's the process that happens then? All right. So say we do put we have first we have to duplicate it. 
Okay. And then we just choose which format we want here. So let's pretend we duplicate it and let's just change the format and let's see what happens with it. All right. Okay. So you might have to, you know, jig, rejig things around. As usual, any tool is like this, mm -hmm. even Canva, but it's pretty pretty much okay, I think. But you just go through, oh, uh, yeah, the, the, the yeah. text the text box is too small right yeah. now and stuff like that. But you just go through and you edit. So you preview, you view it again, and then you make some minor adjustments, but it's doing all the heavy lifting. Exactly, yep. Okay. And and tra training curve. If I if I was to if you have a regular person who's used to using a, you know a simple tool like a Canva or some of the social media creation tools like some of the iPhone tools that we've got, how long do you think it will take them before they from the time they create their account till they can export their first video that they actually feel kind of proud of? Oh my God, I'd say five minutes. <laughs> Shut up. No, it's going to be longer than that. You got to do no. longer than five minutes. Well, considering you have all your materials, all you have to, I mean, really okay. to brand a video, all you need to do is to make sure that they're, you know, of, of course the text, the color, yeah. and then the media, and then that's it. Because if you're using a template and you know that the template fits your needs, that's pretty much all you need. Mm -hmm.